I'm deleting this channel and leaving Friday Night Funkin' for good this time. <laughs> it's clear. Okay, then. That was always allowed. That someone like me is not fit to be a social media celebrity. And now it's gotten to the point where my... Do the donkey video. I'm done playing Friday Night Funkin'. I'm done making Friday Night Funkin' videos. Hey, YouTube. How's it going? My name is Lonnie. Dude, we're watching this freaking Turkey Tom video today. Reacting, I mean. Not just watching. Engaging, reacting, and learning. A schizophrenic Let's Player is talking. Listen and learn. This is the Friday Night Funkin' D-Gens, dude. The freaking apparently. This funny dancing game from Newgrounds attracts some bad guys. Some bad actors, if you will, dude. I barely know this game existed, but people brought it up to me on stream and I freaking played it. Roll the clip. What? Oh my god. These wishy-washy politics. I remember them like they were yesteryear. Loomis! You like Friday Night Funkin'? Friday Night Funkin' is an indie game that exploded in popularity in late 2020. While many projects have gone viral over yeah, the Yeah, that years. explains why I barely had heard of it, because it was just so late in life, dude. In 2020, I was busy, uh, you know, making Let's Plays. I guess I had no excuse to not know about it. Few have reached the same level of phenomenon. It spawned an entire industry of fan content across social media. This is largely because of its modability, allowing for easy and complete oh. customization that community has since taken That's on why they have all the freaking remakes with like Five Nights at Freddy Night Funkin' and fucking Minecraft mm. Friday Night Funkin' and Life of its own, becoming one of the biggest I rarely the even see the normal Friday Night Funkin' original skins, to be honest. Game. But that's also where the problems began to arise. When you create an easy path to fame in a community of mostly children, it unfortunately, enables a lot of predatory behavior. And that takes us to the story of Sky. But before I go any further, right now I'm in busy April surfing. 2021, an account called BF's Wife Forever became notorious on TikTok. It was run by a kid who, like many, created animation memes of their OC, Sky. But unlike other fans, they had a deep hatred for one of the games. This is my OC, please do not steal. I drew this character and it's my rendition of Sonic. He's, he's purple Sonic, which is not a Sega property. It's my OC. I'm pretty sure that's what OC means. Game's main characters. Friday Night Funkin' centers around a boyfriend trying to impress his love interest. Ah, but yes, by busting out a freestyle on stage in a rap battle about dancing? It's like a rhythm game, like DDR. Yeah, yeah right? The artist had a crush on the protagonist. Oh. This resulted in a video where Sky crucifies, tortures, and kills girlfriend. Wait, it what? Went viral. Is that still up? Damn it, what did he say it was called? Friday Night Funkin' centers around a boyfriend trying to impress his love interest. But as their username implies, the artist had a crush on the protagonist. This resulted in a video where Sky crucifies, tortures, and kills girlfriend. It quickly went viral as word spread Whoa. across social media of the laughably bad cartoon. The attention wasn't all mean-spirited though, as others instead found the earnestness endearing. People began drawing fan art, inducting Sky to the growing cast of community-made characters. That sentiment became especially common after mod creator BB Panzu took notice. On April 8th, he published Versus Sky, a fully fleshed out mod based on the TikToks. It features original artwork, music, and even cutscenes. <coughs> it looks satanic, dude. That's kind of what I was trying to look for, but maybe it's better I don't find such horrible things on my computer. My dad's gonna be pissed. I what? Dude, this looks Versus like Sky. fucking Undertale. It was released to massive acclaim. His official showcase sits at nearly 6 million views. In the description box, he shouts out her creator, linking to the account and viewers to show them love. This led them to accumulate 50,000 followers overnight. Everything seemed perfect, with Sky becoming more and more prominent in the fan base. But tragically, that's where the story takes a dark turn. Uh -oh. You see, there's a large subsection of the community devoted to adult content. Once Sky got popular, it was Oh, like mods for adults? Okay, that's a little degenerate. I suppose you could say, but nothing wrong with that, you know? Nothing wrong with that. Can't well, even go on the Steam Marketplace without seeing a little bit of adult content, you know? But this became an nothing issue wrong after the creator was discovered to be only 12 years old. Their age was first revealed by BB Panzu on a community post. This led many to begin See, that's not an adult, so there is something wrong with that. decision to make a mod in the first place. No hates, but why on earth did BB Panzu make a mod entirely based off of some 12-year-old kid and not predict this would happen? Why did they have to make a mod about one kid in particular, knowing how horny FNF fans are? While most Good felt Lord. guilty, some took it as an invitation to harass the preteen even further. BF's wife forever was inundated with death threats and smuts until one day, they snapped. On April 26th, a group of trolls raided her creator's Discord, trolls. flooding it with adult fan art. It had happened before, but this time, the artist decided to fight back with her own collection of gore and porn. That decision was heavily criticized by the community, Jesus. effectively exposing minors Don't to Don't fight more fire with fire, you ever heard that? I didn't call the fire department, I fought fire. I just got fire. I called the fire. 
curse. Now, getting backlash Then from we would have to still call them, and you're in trouble now. Besides, BF's wife forever ended up having a mental breakdown. It culminated with a stream on TikTok in which they urinated on camera. Upon hearing this- Huh? What? Do that in the skibbity toilet. I'm trying to make it. This is like for the TikTok brain, you know? Let's go potty. BB Panzu was Clearly you need to be told. He immediately deleted the mod from Game Banana, writing, I ruined their life. He then elaborated on the decision in a community post. When I initially saw their TikTok, I was reminded of Sans fangirls and how they were treated in the fandom. I didn't want another person doing some harmless self-indulgence to be bullied on the internet. So I made the mod as a sort of embracement of cringe and how it doesn't have to ruin a fandom. That's why I spent a lot of time on it. It kind of worked, having people celebrate Sky the character and sending the creator fan art, which I intended. But of course, that doesn't outweigh the negative effects it had. So such as being surrounded in an environment of not safe for work of their character. Not to mention, the sudden fame caused him to receive death threats, all while only being a kid. I can only imagine how bad I've affected their life, and I truly regret That's it. By the up. time you're reading this, the mod should probably be down, never to be found. Shortly after, the character itself was indefinitely banned from the community. Naturally, much of what transpired that day wasn't totally documented. This led to some level of ambiguity over what had actually occurred. But BF's wife forever quickly confessed to everything. They issued a public apology for sending gore, promising to never do it again. Okay. They also admitted to peeing on as stream because they thought it was you're funny. Sorry. Following this, it became impossible for BF's wife forever to continue in the fandom. And on May 4th, the artist deleted all of their accounts on social media, leaving the community for good. By this point, it's worth clarifying a few things regarding the initial drama. While BB Panzu assumed Sky to be a self-insert, the character was officially 19. BF's wife forever was also unclear about their age, later claiming to be 14. That doesn't change much, but I referenced their age before, so I know people are going to ask about it. In spite of all of this, that didn't mean the end for Sky as a character. In the original mod, she alludes to performing a shift to appear in the game. Many fans decided to expand on that concept, creating their own interpretations of the character. This included an adult-oriented version from 4chan known as Sky Blue, but one rose above the rest for being the canonical continuation of Sky. Before leaving, BF's wife forever gave ownership of her to a close friend named Kitsune Skulls. This would be revealed on December 18th when he debuted the new design on Twitter. It was received very, very poorly. New Sky was criticized <laughs> for being edgy, as well as being made related to random characters in the game. The whole point of the character was a fan so obsessed with boyfriends that they warped reality. Now, now, Sky hated him and instead had a crush on girlfriend. Regardless, people reluctantly accepted the change after BB Panzu endorsed it. This led the community-wide ban on Sky to be lifted. It was good timing too, as the one-year anniversary of the original mod was quickly approaching. On April 8th, 2022, two mods paying tribute to Sky were released. The first was Sky Remanifested by Mother Team. It builds off the original with dozens of new songs, remixes, what kind of songs are actually even in this game? I mean, the animations look cool. And I'll say scenes. that. The second is New Sky Mod and the Skyverse, based on Kitsune Skull's design. It too features a massive wealth of content. If either is to be official, the latter has both her owner involved as well as BB Panzu. Between both mods, there is over an hour of gameplay, showing there was still love for Sky despite everything. I think the game was pretty fucking hard, right? I just remember not being able to do, like, anything and giving up pretty quickly. Like, how did you even get invested in this Silly little game like but this. just as things I'm went old. south one year ago, shockingly, the character would once again be put center to yet another controversy surrounding its owner. On May 12th, Kitsune Skulls was exposed in a Google Doc from an anonymous individual. They claimed the two had been dating for three years. The accuser was 14 and Kitsune 17 at the time of writing. They allege him to be abusive, often sending photos of their self-harm wounds. This apparently included one incident where he carved Don't their name that. on his inner thigh. Oh, they no. referred to him as a pedophile, pointing to artwork seemingly depicting minors having intercourse. They also show messages Gross. of being obsessive. What Kitsune responded fuck? to this by refuting them being in a relationship at all. Instead, he explains that he was only obsessed with being their friend. He also reveals this had been a debate for some time in private, with their fathers allegedly threatening each other with legal action over the accusations. Regardless of what is true or not, because I'm honestly not sure, the narrative in the community was that Kitsune Skulls was some kind of groomer. And so, it wasn't long before they decided to leave the community as well. I'm so tired, I've fallen into a hole of lies and rumors being spread about me, so people can hate me and get a mod cancel that isn't even out yet. I don't know what more you want from me. I love Sky. I love the character I have created. I love what BB Panzu is doing with her. I love what people are doing when it comes to headcanons and making their own versions. But at what cost? My mental health has just plummeted ever since. This is hell. I can't take it anymore. Following this, they abandoned the accounts and have since never returned. While the ownership over Sky was never formally transferred, the creator of the Skyverse would end up adopting her. They are now largely recognized as the owner of the character. That, for the most part, is where the controversy surrounding Sky ends. It's honestly crazy to think that a single fan-made character can be the subject of this much drama. But as we'll soon discover, it's far from an isolated incident. May May's four, four days? Is that a person? Friday Night Funkin' mods are Is that a song or a, a band? You listen to Waka Flocka at all? Is that a band or a song? That's a, a man.
adapted to original creations. In fact, most reference pre-existing characters and ideas. This can range from gaming mascots to more niche internet genres like creepypasta. That Shout out to the freaking creepypasta movie that they made. That shit sucked. They didn't even put, doesn't even come up when you search it, dude. That's how irrelevant it was. Oh, it has a one star, one and a half star. This came out this year, dude. It doesn't even have Squidward Suicide in it. Oh, it's on Prime Video. If anyone wants to freaking check it out, it's really bad tried to make a name for himself in the FNF community. He started out with mashups of pre-existing songs to moderate success, but the real recognition came after he began making mods. His first featured the original characters, Kai and Korra. Kai was a self-insert, something that'll become apparent later. It was released as a demo in June to promote a fundraiser. He claims to have hired two voice actors who were in a pretty bad situation and needed help to survive. If we can raise $2,000, the Kai mod will have animated cutscenes with voice actors. To this day, the GoFundMe sits at exactly $0. Shortly after, he released his second mod based on Dr. Robotnik. But it wasn't until his third that he gained some notoriety. That's Halloween, he released Sunday Night Suicide, a mod huh? based on the creepypasta Suicide oh. Mouse. Squidward? It quickly garnered oh, Mickey Mouse. millions of views, and his channel gained 20,000 subscribers over the next month. It was downloaded 200,000 times, cementing him as a notable figure in the fandom. But a sentiment that'll be very recurrent in this video is not everyone is necessarily equipped to deal with an audience, and that became apparent as the maze became more outspoken. On several occasions, he vented about getting banned from TikTok, while never specific about the reason, at least one of these was due to a bizarre post he made about Kai. In a strange attempt to see if others found him attractive, he drew the character in underwear. Slight NSFW warning, so I posted this on TikTok out of curiosity to see if Kai was simp material. It ended up getting huge backlash, so I need to ask, does Kai look younger than he is? He's 23, and I had zero intent to make him look any younger. Bro, so he barely looks human. I don't fucking know. On November 17th, Lil Nas X appeared on The Mori Show to stage a fake confrontation with his ex-boyfriend. There, it's revealed the ex was not only married, but had cheated on him with 10 other guys. Maze saw this sketch and thought it was genuine, feeling empathetic enough to pay respect. So, I heard about how Lil Nas X's boyfriend had an affair with 10 other people. I felt awful for Lil Nas. I wanted to make a FNF tribute song to him where he'd vent his feelings to boyfriend, <laughs> who visibly felt bad for- This does not sound real. <laughs> I need to make a Lil Nas X tribute song to make him feel better because his boyfriend cheated on him. This is what the kids are doing these days. Man, should I do it? While the affair you was should fake, not do it is what you should have replied thinking this is appropriate was beyond hysterical. And unsurprisingly, the comments were flooded with people mocking him. He did not take this well. In response I mean, to you don't have hater, to mock replied, him, but you Shut could. the fuck up, you bastard. This oh my god, was base. Just, that's what he replied? Because that's what I would say. Not only cancel the mod, but threaten Maybe to like, leave Maybe like, lick entirely. my nuts. Wrote, this continues to happen. Anyone who has made fan art, let's plays, remixes, etc, etc, will be told to take down everything that has to do with any of my mods. No! This is your final warning. The comments made a complete turn, with Maze now receiving an influx of support. One fan felt so concerned they even reached out to him in private but instead of easily content creators they just want to fucking play their funny little cartoon games with whatever mod this is is it the sexy one or the creepy pasta one i don't can't keep track Thank you. Maze confided that it was all part of an elaborate scheme. Let me let you in on a secret. There's a reason I'm doing that. If the mods are taken down, there will be no one to blame but the haters. See where I'm Only going with this? The, the threat to was blame. simply done to intentionally mobilize his audience against anyone making fun of him. And it did work. At least until this screenshot leaked. The truth led him to face even harsher backlash, this time from previous supporters. It was just a huge red flag. He'd proven himself untrustworthy and willing to lie maliciously. With so much negative attention, Maze attempted to win back the public using his most popular mod. A week after after the haters incident, he added a new phase called Really Happy. It's the creepy pasta Mickey one. But this too backfired. Maze had the screen shake rapidly at certain intervals with no seizure warning. That supposedly led one individual to be nearly hospitalized. Upon confrontation, instead of apologizing, he replied, I wish I never joined this ducking fandom. His complete lack of regard wasn't unnoticed, prompting this response from a user. You've literally made someone's friend have a seizure and nearly hospitalized because of your mod about a fucking suicidal Disney character. Jesus. I swear to God, you literally need help. Their pleas, however, fell on deaf ears. Maze continued- You all probably need some help. Let's not- Let's not get carried away here. We can all use a little help. Doubling down, not seeming to understand what epilepsy was. For the people complaining about the screen shaking, making them uncomfortable, that's the point. I have no intentions to trigger anything, but the fact that the screen shaking is unsettling for people just means I've done my job. So huh? thank you for telling me I did my job well. As a result, his two I voice mean, actors, too screen Blue shake and Crit VA, is too much left. screen shake. Just perhaps add an option for less screen shake. Just my thoughts. The project. Eventually, Maze was forced to admit fault, addressing all the controversies. Seems in the like YouTube a relatively small thing to get that big of a fucking stink over, but you know, if somebody got hurt, I understand that, but I don't even think that's necessarily this guy's fault. I wouldn't play indie games if they could hurt me 
that bad because sometimes it feels like they could. He spends most of it pointing out he wasn't the only person to make mistakes. He also clarifies being 18, so there wasn't an issue with him posting suggestive artwork. But I imagine the concern was more so about his audience. Regardless, these controversies show how irresponsible he may have been before the allegations. Even back then, he managed to alienate almost everyone around him. But things took a dark turn when allegations began to surface on January 2nd, 2022. That day, a document was published on Twitter discussing various allegations about the maze. It is 32 pages long, covering a variety of different subjects. The first was his now defunct Discord server. There was an easily accessible channel called the chonk chat where he and his friends allegedly shared fetish artwork i this don't i don't like where this is, has gone i can't even say where it's going god fucking bless us may, may the lord have mercy for where it's going but we're already too far. Slater spun off into its own server. Both explicitly prohibited adult content due to the presence of minors. However, he violated his own community rules. One screenshot shows him describing swallowing what channel the specific fuck? Anger, his I hate it. to make the fandom more kink friendly. I hate it so much. We need to be less kink friendly, just as a worldwide population. It also contains testimony from his former voice actor, Crit VA. Crit reveals that when he confronted Maze for the haters incident, Maze lied about being framed for murder. This, as it turns out, was because the person told him his mod caused seizures. This infuriated him so much, he severed ties with Maze permanently. On page four, the author alleges there are several claims of grooming. They only elaborate on one in the document, involving a 15-year-old girl. It reads, Maze attempted to convince a minor to break up with her boyfriend and date him after making her send nudes. This is supported with three screenshots. The first is the minor's boyfriend friend venting about the incident. He is such a fucking pervert. He forced her into doing sexual things with him and asked her to break up with me so many times. He used her after he found out she was autistic and never credited her for anything she did for him. Then, a statement from the girl herself. I am below the age of consent and as soon as we met, he immediately manipulated me into doing sexual things for him while I wasn't comfortable, right after I told him I have high-functioning autism. The final screenshot shows him and the boyfriend arguing, in which Maze claims she's lying. If you'll notice, there's no direct evidence in these screenshots pertaining to this accusation. That's really an issue throughout this entire document. Many of the claims, for how severe they are, are not corroborated sufficiently at all, and some could even be outright debunked. Like this screenshot being from an explicitly adult channel. Because of this, when he released his initial response to the allegations, it was actually received quite well. Maze outs the victim as being named Lily. He claims that Lily misrepresented what happened, while pointing out that she's provided no evidence whatsoever. And that's a valid argument. However, he then argues that this exchange proves his innocence. Maze, you lied to me, so you could try to ruin my life. You're legit one or two years younger than me. How is that pedophilia? Victim, I'm under the age of consent. Maze. And so am I. God, I can't believe you used me like that. Victim. Used you? The fuck? Maze. You know what? If this was a way to get me to not be your friend anymore, I got good news for you. We're done. With no substantial evidence either- They're gaining more weight. They're just so obsessed with gaining weight that they're trying to get emotional baggage to weigh them down. They can't get dense enough, dude. At least that's what it feels like as me the reactor up here way, it started to become a situation of who do you believe? And while fans supported Maze at first, that trust seemingly eroded over time. His first mistake was when he uploaded a video version of his response. The thumbnail to it is just insane. I don't know why he did this. But more seriously, on January 19th, the YouTuber Toastify put out a comprehensive video about the situation. He points out that Maze has a history of lying while dismissing any fault as a mistake. My point here is that Maze will always go to something as a mistake or a slip up to address things. In response, Maze left a comment affirming everything was true up until the grooming. He claimed it changed his perspective to the point of releasing a document holding himself accountable. It was published on January 24th and like his previous apologies was lackluster. Well, I can't read all that. You gotta release a video it's or an audio book and even attempts to baselessly psychoanalyze his accuser. But, at the very least, he promised to change and become more responsible around minors. He admitted to not taking the steps necessary to secure- Just don't be around them! What the fuck?! adult-only space. And, at one time at least, it did seem like a genuine mistake. But then, exactly nine days later, he engaged in erotic roleplay, give soft- Oh my god, no way! Okay. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Someone put on a few pounds. Maze. I sit up, my belly pressed against Softy. Yes, oh, oh, shit! This that? shit's getting buried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm uncomfortable. RP, maybe? <laughs> Oh my, why? Why is there so much of this online? One month later, he spoke Too to a 14 year old on Instagram about porn. He teaches them what it is, why they should watch it, and about his love of inflation. These screenshots circulated across TikTok, causing him to once again try to debunk them. This time. Is it part of Vore the fact that it's fucking nonsensical and can never happen? Or is that just the hidden undertones that I've attributed to it whenever I thought of it in my head and haven't verbalized it out loud? Because who the fuck am I talking about? What am I doing? Well, how did we get here? Let's continue. 
would prove fatal to his innocence. Oh, Vore is when you swallow uh, uh, somebody whole and it's like a sex kink. He has caught the attention of a person Maze had dated. At but it's not cannibalism, so it's impossible. Time of his interactions with Lily. They were 14 years old. They two had previously made an agreement to leave each other alone. But upon realizing he'd potentially victimized others, they decided to finally speak out. This first came in a vague illusion, which Maze immediately took notice of. In response, he wrote an email to their mother asking that it be removed. Hello, not my it would mother. Your daughter has don't broken write her about my Vore Kink Discord server drama. Please don't talk to my mom ever about this or anything. The deal, which was trying to keep these alone, parts of my life separate. Sorry, I had to add this. She do the same. I politely ask she deletes the video and never makes anything about me again. Instead, <laughs> the victim decided to make a 22 minute expose, posting it to Instagram in late April. Guys, it's time I finally fess up and give you guys the entire story of William the G. Fuck is this presentation? I was in Just a draw my world. life as fucking odd ones this out ass exposed like video. TikToker, but famous video game modder. He prefers to be known as May Maze for days, or the underscore maze with a Z at the end. Now you listen here, William. You've insulted my family, manipulating me into feeling like the bad guy. But the main manipulation tactic that hurts me till this day is making me think I wanted to do the things that you wanted me to do with you that I never thought of doing in my life. Maze confided his fat fetish to the teen, which led them to reveal their own. This escalated to the two role-playing together as they were goaded into acting out his fantasies. But despite being a participant, they claimed they only did so because they needed someone to talk to. Spawned, I thought she was 14 like you. This is despite having explicitly told him before that she was 10. I'm not the hearing any uh 21 plus maybe Constantly. 31 plus it was finally broken off that may with the final arguments including him telling them you have a sexy belly After i that, want to be on just whoo just gotta get my brain where your brain's at in the gutter if you ask me him. all right he would continue messaging them every day for the next month when that didn't work he began spamming their email addresses with both apologies and curses on their family it got so bad that they contemplated calling the police until they suddenly received an email from someone claiming to be his mother hello this is will's mother i'd like to talk to you before you call the police he has brought this situation to my attention and I you don't sound like himself. someone's mother to be burned for a very long time could i see these screenshots of those no please they immediately called this out as just being him, to which the next email was, Okay, fine, but I just wanted to say we'll leave you alone. I just wanted to say that I've moved on. You don't have to worry about me again, or my pixie. We surrender, you win. Let's just forget about this ever happened. Hell, let's just forget I'll about each other. To, man. Please. Once this video was published, the maze immediately began covering things up. On May 2nd, he changed his channel name to Starlight to distance himself from the allegations. He claimed it was due to sharing his email with a close associate that was now being sketchy. That was intended to set up his ultimate defense, that he wasn't actually William, and this had all been done by a hacker. For a moment, it seemed like he was going to pretend nothing even happened, that he would rebrand and hope everyone would forget. But surprisingly, on May 15th, he decided to delete his channel entirely. While it may seem like this came out of newfound shame, it was entirely for self-preservation. You see, the day before, a screenshot of his iconic, not a pedophile thumbnail went viral on Twitter. It accumulated nearly 70,000 likes. So, yeah, it was most likely that and not any guilt. Hours before pressing the button, he wrote one final post to his community. I'm deleting this channel and leaving Friday Night Funkin'. For good this time. <laughs> it's clear. Okay then, that was always allowed. That someone like me is not fit to be a social media celebrity. And now it's gotten to the point where my- Cue the donkey video. I'm done playing Friday Night Funkin'. I'm done making Friday Night Funkin' videos. I quit. My family thinks I'm a liability. I used to love this community, but now I get scared every time I post something. I'm probably going to be a fetish artist or something. And with that, Maze disappeared from the public eye. To this day, his whereabouts are unknown. It appears he's still active. Probably on DeviantArt. As leaks have surfaced on 4chan of previously unseen creations. That includes another creepypasta-based mod. Other posters uncovered an alt account of his under the name Walter Universe, but it's since been deleted. The most recent leak occurred on November 2nd. An anonymous user posted his personal information as well as pictures of his genitals. In what? response, another claimed to report him to the police, though there's no evidence this actually happened. Of course, that didn't stop rumors from spreading, to the point that many now believe he's in prison. For better or for worse, as of the time of writing this, it is not the case. V10 incident. Koto Modachi, also known as Lara, is a Brazilian animator who rose to prominence in 2021. Her first public video is a mod for Among Us, though her content covers a variety of different fandoms. That includes Sonic, Five Nights at Freddy's, and of course, Friday Night Funkin'. She broke That's a lot of heavy hitters! ...thousand views for the first time with an edit of Boyfriend spinning on a chair, and that growth only continued in the weeks that followed. Throughout February, her memes received tens of millions of views, but her main staple were original FNF mods that played into trends like the imposter 
Foster, and Pico in a maid outfit. As a result, by April, she broke the 100,000 sub milestone. With such a meteoric rise to fame, it was only a matter of time before any skeletons were unearthed, but no one could have predicted she'd expose them herself. On May 9th, a rumor began that Lara was dating a 13-year-old boy. For reference, she was 18. This led to a confrontation in her Discord server, where she confirmed it was true. Quit your bullshit, Kodo, and realize you're dating a child. So what? Lara attempted to defend herself by stating it was completely non-sexual. In a lengthy reply, she states they'd both done research to confirm it was legal. Then, she compared it to a parental or sibling relationship. She writes, I take the full responsibility and- These are all very different things. Maybe get your story straight to help this child develop in life like a big sister or parent along with his parents. But if his parents aren't being a good example, I will be. This is, as pointed out by many, a common form of grooming. It's a way to build trust until the victim is of legal age. Upon realizing no one agreed with her, she deleted the oh, entire shit. server, but attention. not before calling everyone disappointing and toxic. Surprisingly, though the revelation hit Twitter, it only reached about 100 people. It likely could have been swept under the rug at this point. That is, until she decided to vent about the incident on her community tab. In a several paragraph long rant, she reiterated her defense while adding, I think this is why the FNF developers are slowly getting away from all of you. Immediately, the entire fandom reacted in disgust as comments piled in to call her out. Despite this, she doubled down. In response to one user, she claimed they judged adults too much. Eventually realizing how inescapable this backlash was, she eventually claimed it was a mistake. But even in this statement, she continued to make excuses. First, she claims to have not known what a groomer was, due to English being her second language. I, as a Brazilian who is still learning English, figured out yesterday what grooming means, and I feel rather disgusted and uncomfortable. However, she rejects being called a pedophile, and again attacks the character of her critics. What I did was a mistake, and you guys are just repeating yourselves like a broken record. If you all were parents, your kids would already be depressed. We all do something wrong in life, and it would be <laughs> hypocritical to blame others, but not yourself. She then your kids would be depressed! What the I think that might be a translation error, but it's still funny. ...past a week, so it wasn't possible for her to corrupt a pure child like him in such a short span of time. That isn't a great argument, because even if true, the grooming would include their overall friendship. Regardless, she continues, We used to give pets, hugs, some support, and arguments about sadness, play games with friends, or stream drawings before and after this relationship. In the end, we just confused being a brother and sister with this. While Lara claims it was a mistake, and that she wasn't aware it was wrong, she later contradicted herself entirely. In a conversation with Harley TBS, she admits to knowing before their relationship. Can I be completely honest? I knew it was wrong, but not the consequences. I didn't want to seem like I'm trying to excuse myself, but I didn't know this problem would be big. And as she got caught in lies, she started to characterize things much differently. For example, in a conversation with Red Knight 777, she claims to feel more like the kid as he was a bold guy. That idea is present in her initial argument, claiming he gave the care and attention she needed. It's clear she still didn't understand the issue, later stating, if he's uncomfortable with it, he can just leave. And even after all of this, the two continued staying in contact due to their close friendship. The controversy died down after Lara made a post announcing her indefinite <coughs> hiatus, but not because of the backlash. No, This that's break will remain forever. Why? I'm retiring. Not because of the drama, but because I hate you all. Okay, perfect. It was actually due to the Friday Night Funkin' fandom becoming too chaotic. Uh -huh. Unsurprisingly, this was all a diversion, as she attempted to figure out a way to escape her baggage. It went into action on September 27th, when she completely rebranded herself as Murph. That included deleting videos with a total of 14 million views, and the worst part is that it worked, with Lara making a complete recovery. Her channel got 30 million views in November, and 12 million the month after. She gained 60,000 subscribers in yeah, December. I don't trust anybody in 2024 if you don't have a digital footprint of at least a few years. I gotta see some work to just to know me. Just to know, for us to know each other. Alone, easily surpassing the 200,000 milestone. Though this was briefly stunted by commenters exposing her identity, to this day she remains quite popular. Because of this, people began to dig deeper into her past, only to discover she'd done it before. Lara had been part of the Ace Attorney Whoa. community under the name Cosmo when she was 17. This was first alluded to in a conversation with Red Knight, where she admitted, I will confess to you, before I ever had a relationship with anyone, there was this kid that was like- It sounds kind of fun to be like an undercover anonymous weirdo just hopping from community to community. I could never though. I'm just Lonnie. 13 or 14. He kept following me, saying he loved me. I felt uncomfortable, but in a leaked conversation, it was revealed she- I am also Big Tom Hanks in the Bloons community, I suppose. Actually had an interest in that child. In fact, one associate of Lara from back then recalled, she told me that if nothing sexual happens, she could date a 13-year-old boy. And she told me that she wouldn't huh? do anything wrong with the child. That should I sound eerily familiar. There's, because that doesn't- no, no, I did the math. Quick maths here. Hey, hey, buddy. You know- 
lied about being unaware, it wasn't a mistake, but a pattern of behavior. One that is especially concerning, given her content's appeal to children. Many began to fear that instead of understanding what she did wrong, she simply learned not to talk about it. Not helping that idea is the fact that upon returning, she kept defending herself. You're still in contact with minors. I haven't committed any crimes. I don't need to cut myself off from the world. And I was very wrong for people to make me believe that I did need to. And that is where the story, unfortunately, ends. For the time being, it seems she'll only grow more popular despite widespread protest, continuing to make viral videos and grow her audience. Because of this, it's truly uncertain- Kirby and Hales YouTubers 3! I gotta check that out later. Even though I don't- I know what you're up to! Future holds for Murph. Amor Ultra is an Indonesian YouTuber who first joined the site in 2013. He didn't upload until three years later, making animated short films and let's plays of Geometry Dash. They often Whoa, featured his character- Whoa, that's based as fuck. Hold on. Let's hear him out. What did he do wrong? Amor Ultra is an Indonesian YouTuber who first joined the site in 2013. He didn't upload until three years later, making animated short films and let's plays of Geometry Dash. They often featured his characters Bob and Bosip, who served as the channel's mascots. While getting some success over the years, by the end of 2019, he was stuck hovering around 5,000 subs. Because of this, he decided to take a break and completely rethink his content. Amor returned in March of 2020 with a total overhaul, including new designs for his characters. This second effort was kickstarted by a collaboration he did with the musician Boom Kitty. Their collaboration video accumulated over a million views, facilitating his growth over the year. And in April of 2021, he had doubled his sub counts, breaking the 10,000 milestone. While finally making a name for himself, this was nothing in comparison to a few months later. That June, he released a Friday Night Funkin' mod featuring his very own mascots. It not only had new songs and menus, but also boasted original cutscenes with voice acting. That was quite a rare feat at the time, bringing a new wave of viewers to his channel. And that only continued as he produced more original mods. Several of his showcases quickly surpassed a million, and he started pulling out Averages of 300,000 views per video. In Damn, dude, this game was so popular. I don't know how I never heard of it. Of August alone, he gained over 90,000 subscribers. I guess it just looks creepy because it, or like it always. I always saw the mods, so it. I didn't know that what they were referencing, I guess. Early December, his channel broke 200k. <coughs> Amor was clearly a rising star, becoming influential as both an artist and content creator. But, just as his come-up was happening, this is when the cracks began to show. In case it wasn't cracks. obvious, his mods were collaborations with many people. As his projects became more ambitious, he started hiring staff to work on them. Their largest at the time was an expansion for Versus Bob and Bosip, called the EX Updates. Unfortunately, due to it being so high profile, it was the target of leaks. And on November 27th, that included an early Bo build of the game. This upset Amor so much that he pushed the release date to December 3rd, one week later. But as the deadline approached, it became apparent this wasn't possible. He lashed out at the team, constantly screaming at everyone. He scrapped many major features before overworking the coders to the point that one of them got sick. Then, the update was pushed out on December 12th as a complete buggy mess. The release was a disaster, as fans were very confused about the sudden drop in quality. In response, several members of his team spoke out explaining what happened. Amor would apologize in a Twitter voice memo, admitting that it was all his fault. The apology was taken Damn, somewhat well, with most willing to move on, but it would be thrown back in his face again just a week and a half later, when even worse allegations started to emerge. On Christmas Eve, no less. On December 24th, screenshots leaked of Amor talking to an individual named Aether DX. Merry this was Christmas. viewed as irresponsible, as she'd been exiled for alleged grooming. He responded in a twit longer, clarifying he didn't support her or her return. He simply replied because she claimed to be a better person, but this was in vain, as the floodgates quickly opened, and over the next 24 hours, several allegations surfaced of his own inappropriate behavior with minors. The first oh, came no. not from the Friday Night Funkin' community, but Geometry Dash. In a Reddit post, an anonymous user claims to have been in a private Discord with him since 2018. It's nothing fucking sacred to you gooning. God dang. Creep. They write that. For the longest time I'm speechless, dude. Get that out of my game. Known him, he's been acting really weird, asking for not safe for work content from minors and talking about doing lewd acts with them. This screenshot from 2019 has him stating his desire to make NSFW of a 14 and 12 year old couple. What the fuck? He calls them sexy, verbally responds, maybe. He replies, that's a yes. In the comments, one user claims to have also been on a server with him. They allege he pressured a 13 year old into drawing not safe for work art. They do align with the evidence released seven hours later. On December 25th, another modder named Colson posted screenshots he'd been sent anonymously. The first First is a series of tweets with all identifying information removed. I don't want to post this on main since it'd get a lot of traction, and Amor would know who I am. I was told this by a friend who showed proof that he has a not safe for work alt. Then, he shows the artwork, consensual drawings of him and his friends having sex. The youngest here was 17, the oldest 19, and Amor- JUST ME AND MY FRIENDS! 18. While not egregious, bear in mind that this was the first evidence he drew such material. Yet, in the replies, one user indicates it was well known behind the scenes. They then show a drawing of his character having sex with a girl he liked that was done without her knowledge. Hours later, the 12 year old from the Geometry Dash Reddit post came forward. She first clarified <laughs> oh being 13 God. at the time before giving her side of the bed. 
Oops. And in the new screenshots, he confirms drawing art of them that he'd kept for himself. She reluctantly asks to see it, only for him to send crop photos confirming their existence. He later asked her to write smut fanfiction of her and her boyfriend for him to jerk off to. And she I agreed, will respectfully decline. Only for him to then send art of her performing Not Felicio. that respectfully, the final honestly. emerged shortly after her thread by a user named Nala. In the screenshot from 2021, Amor can be seen asking a 15-year-old to show their people. No! When they respond, I don't know why I even asked. Sorry about that. He then can be seen linking them directly to his not safe for work account. On December 27th, Amor issued a statement responding to everything. Rather than deny the accusations, however, he admits they are true and said that he was now seeking therapy. He writes, I'm not asking for your forgiveness or redemption. I'm truly sorry for my actions and the people that I've hurt, been uncomfortable or disappointed. I'm sorry I've made so many bad decisions that have led many others to being upset. He then states his intention you. to leave the internet to pursue professional treatment. And to this day, he stuck true to that promise. He has yet to return to social media in any form, despite it once being his family's main source of income. And so, it remains uncertain if he'll ever attempt a return, and how his audience will respond if he ever were to return. Throughout this video, I've referenced a community of fans relegated to 4chan. They're known as Slash Funk G, gathering in a series of threads to discuss the game. Well, in August of 2021, they released a mod celebrating the site's history and board culture. Titled Versus V, it's largely based on a series of comics from 2008. Despite what you may expect, it's very well made and covers a lot of internet history. This led the mod to become quite popular, especially after being uploaded to Game Banana. However, that also meant it was subject to great backlash. The first issue some had was the abundance of racial and homophobic slurs. Moreover, oh. it baselessly calls several popular creators pedophiles. Still, oh. more sensitive types were able to look past the offensive humor to enjoy an undeniably high effort mod. Oh, it's but, a funny mod? Okay. But that all changed when a few days later, the game was alleged to contain images of child exploitation. On August 14th, Not a good an mod. update Throw to the it mod in the released trash. and quickly pushed onto Game Banana. While otherwise innocuous, a moderator investigated and found images hidden in the files. This led them to trash the entire project, with the reason being NSFW images depicting minors found in the files. They then took to the site's Discord server to tag everyone in an announcement. It has been discovered that the newest update for the mod contains new files in which it includes pictures that depict content of a minor entirely. The community went into a panic, with word quickly spreading about the incident. FNF versus V has CP in the files deleted. To but anyone who decided to play the mod, the Friday Night Funkin' versus V mod has illegal content in the files, please delete it. This led some to become paranoid that the FBI was going to kick down their doors. They started Jesus. giving instructions on how to destroy all evidence of such material. The most utilitarian way is to delete and overwrite the VMOD with 10 passes. This ensures the what? files aren't readable. Anyone who was skeptical was questioned about their intentions. In this exchange, <laughs> one user states they couldn't find any evidence in their files. Wait, what? I checked everything and didn't find anything. Why did you go searching for it? But for somehow, real. the accusations escalated even further. Kind of self-reporting there, buddy. Before long, it was alleged the entire game was secretly malware. This began after someone claimed to I have- I mean, it doesn't seem like a secret. It looks like malware looked into the EXE I downloaded and found a it from r slash malware. They advised anyone who downloaded the mod to immediately make a new account on Discord. Before long, that was distorted into it being a cryptocurrency miner. But then, someone invented the narrative that it was Wrong a- Wrong kind of miner, I think. See, this is how word travels and rumors start, dude. Conspiracy to hack every large account in the community. This was partially due to an incident occurring at the same time. On September 3rd, a moderator on Game Banana was compromised by a hacker named Arch. He deleted several popular mods before stating it would be cool to see the Friday Night Funkin' community in flames. This led what? people to attribute him as the creator of the original I mean, I don't mod. disagree given the last 30 minutes or so of my understanding of this community. I used to think it was just a funny cartoon game with a little bit of edgy undertones, and now I've seen the truth. I've seen too much. And I don't like dancing no more. And I'm never gonna dance again! Involved with FNF mods. So what was the point of this? One of the creators of the Versus V Tan mod, who says he wants to get all kitties off of the game because it's cringe and unbased. He put a keylogger in the mod, probably because he knew people would play it, and then got the accounts of all the big people. It was only after this that someone involved with the mod directly finally spoke out. Dude0216, who charted the songs, wrote a community post to clear the air. He clarifies that there wasn't any virus or keylogger, and that it was just a FNF mod. This should have been obvious given the third-party scans, and the fact that the entire source code was public Damn from it. the beginning. But he goes on to finally address the event that started this all. Second of all, about that image in the files, the reason it was put in there is so that the mod got taken off of Game Banana. The person who created the mod wasn't the person that posted it there, and they wanted it to be taken off of Game Banana, which is why they added that image in the updates. And by the way, I didn't know about this addition until around five minutes before the mod got deleted. Indeed, it had only been done because the mod got too popular and was put on the site without permission. Now, he doesn't exactly correct the record of what the image was, so I'd like to make that clear. The file, while disgusting, is not literal CP. It's a crudely drawn MS Paint comic from 2014 of an underage board mascot being essayed. It definitely warrants being removed 
removed, but no one was ever at risk of going to prison. While this might seem like an odd story to end things on, I felt it did highlight an issue I had doing research. There is a common tendency to grossly exaggerate claims in the community, to the point that it's difficult to take anything at face value. This is especially problematic when it comes to accusations as serious as grooming. I hope this story can show you how important it is to be responsible before spreading such allegations. Dang, dude. There's a lot of scary people in there, dude. I'm gonna be the freaking old man yelling at the clouds now and say, Be safe online, kids! But dude, shout out to the Turkey Tom. I'll link this full video down below. Thank you to him for digging through all that so I will never have to. And now I can just go back to forgetting this game exists. It's no good. I gotta get off this damn internet. How do you guys feel about Friday Night Funkin'? Have you played the actual game? What's your favorite mod that's appropriate? Hopefully it's the Bible mod or the uh, US presidential candidate mod or something good and respectable. Thank you guys for freaking watching it. The like button if you enjoyed this reaction video. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.